All right, should be able to hear me now. Hopefully. Um. Oh, and I also have the stream open so I can hear myself. <laughs> I'm pause that. Okay. <laughs> oh, last thing we need to do is bam. Okay, so now you should be able to see me as well. So, uh, I oh there it is. It actually finished too. So, um. So I wanted to take some time this afternoon. Well, it's afternoon for me. I don't know what it is for you, and maybe in the future it might be a different time as well. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys, uh, first of all, we're going through how to use PowerShell to find the account lockout source in an Active Directory environment. Uh, but I'll be doing this, not only showing you how, but how to submit a SNP for tech SNPs. So as you may or may not know, I'm a contributor for tech SNPs. Um, it's an online training platform, techsnips.io. Check it out if you haven't already. We'll be talking a lot about that today. Um, so we're just going to get started. Uh, so I'm literally starting from, let's clear that, uh, absolute, oh, and thanks to Windows, I'm using his start stream function there at the beginning that you probably saw. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually delete that out of there because this is my demo. So I'm actually, so I'm, I'm creating a demo. I'm starting from zero. Uh, so we're going to write this script together. Well, I mean, I'm going to write it and hope that, here, actually, let me, I'm going to bring up my dashboard on the other side. I think I can see the chat. This is my first time ever using, oh, yes. There we go. I, oh, this is my first time using live stream. So when someone's chatting me, I didn't even know it. All right, perfect. Okay, now I can keep up with that. Um, so now, now I'm getting audio from the Twitch app. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, I lost my train of thought there. So we're gonna we're gonna be writing a script together, uh, as well as then walking through uh, the submission process to Tech Snips. Uh, so first of all, I got assigned uh, this snip because I well I shouldn't say I got assigned. I, I asked for it. Um, so we've got. Uh, if you're not a current contributor, we have this nifty little, here we go, I'm going to bring it over here, uh, Trello board uh, where we're tracking all the different SNPs that we've got. Uh, and so you can see that we've, we can submit SNPs to approval needed and get approved or get, and they get approved. So they get moved to the approved record list. Uh, and so you can see that how to, how to discover the source of an Active Directory user lockout using PowerShell. Uh, it's been assigned to me, uh, and so I'm going to be figuring this out. So uh, this is, uh, I should say that uh, as, you know, as an IT guy, this is something I know how to do. Um, I thought I thought it was something I actually already had a, a script for, but I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Uh, so that's why we're going to run through how to do it. And uh, just by the way, all the cool, cool kids do use tech snips. I can back that up. Um, so uh, what I did find uh, that I like to do uh, for all the SNPs is I like to see, um, it, it may be something that I know how to do, but I may not necessarily have the best way to do it. Uh, so I always do a little research ahead of time, and I found this really great article by this wonderful man named Adam Bertram uh, talking about how to do the same thing. And I wanted to throw that in there because it's not, uh, it's don't feel bad if you've got a SNP assigned to you. You got to look up how to do it, or you want to make sure that the way you're doing it is the right way to do it, or the way that other people are, are doing it. Uh, because, I, well, I guess just because I do it doesn't mean that you should do it too. I don't know. Um, but something else I want to emphasize before we jump into it is beca is just because this is the way that I write snips and record snips doesn't mean it's the best way. Definitely not the only way, but it's the way that I do it. So that's just what we're going to be running through, obviously, because I'm doing it right. Uh, so. Yeah, I'll get some shout outs for Adam in the chat. <laughs> uh, for the people who don't know, he's the founder of TechSnips. So that's why I it was funny that I, I found this. I was actually reading through this before I noticed it was Adam. Uh, anyway, uh, so back to VS Code. So we have, so when, when I do a demo in PowerShell, I separate everything into regions. So you can see I've got, uh, I've got two base regions that I have in all of my scripts. Um, my demo region here is at the top. It is a throw, uh, and what that does is if I hit F5 to actually run this script, it fails. Oh, went into debug mode. Uh, and I have that there so that anytime I hit F5, it's not going to run through or run everything because as a demo, I'm running it line by line. 
Uh, and then for my clean section, so th this is where uh, I run this every time I, I do a new demo. So it sets the prompt to nothing. And oh, Adam's talking about how attractive he is. Of course, he's got to say that. Uh, <laughs> sets the prompt to, to absolutely nothing and then clears the host. Uh, so one of the guidelines for recording a SNFT is to have a prompt as short as possible, unless it's uh, unless it's applicable to what you're what we're, we're, what you're recording. Uh, so I don't actually have to do this now, but just to demonstrate what it actually does, setting the prompt to nothing and clearing the host, bam. But you knew that I was going to do that, though, right? Okay, so the next region, I'm going to try not to talk and type at the same time because I've been practicing that for my recordings for recording my SNFs. Um, uh, but my regions, I try to give them good names. I don't have a name for this one yet because I haven't gotten there. Um, so, but the first thing we do know about account lockouts is the event ID. So I'm gonna make a make a variable just called lockout ID four seven four zero. And I mean, the reason I know that is because well, not only did I read. <laughs> read some of the other articles, but that's something if you've uh, worked in Active Directory, you've probably had to look at before, right? Uh, so the other thing uh, that we need to do is uh, determine where those lockouts are coming from. Uh, and so in an Active Directory environment, the uh, PDC, the primary domain controller, well, an Active Directory emulator, uh, is, is going to be the domain controller where it, it stores all the lockouts uh, if you don't believe me, we can demonstrate that. Nope, my demo environment only has one domain controller, so it's not really a good demonstration. But uh, it's it's documented. Uh, so we are going to find the PDC. Uh, and so a lot of the stuff, uh, well, like I said, I pull, pulled from the article, but already knew ahead of time. Get AD domain. Uh, and that will return an object that has the PDC emulator and here you don't believe me because in when in recording a text this we believe uh, that you should always never ask someone to believe you um, so I'm in let's see I'm actually remoted into our text snips uh, lab environment so let me let me back up so one of the big thing, big things I really love about text snips is it makes it really easy for someone like myself uh, to record content uh, training content it's you know it's really low pressure uh, but they provide a demo environment. So if you don't have one at home, that's not a big deal. And so, uh, oh, what else do they, oh, editors. They also have editors. So if, you, so if you've been at techsnips.io, you've looked at some of the videos, uh, you see that there's like call outs, there's cuts, there's clean audio. Uh, so if you mess up, the editors are gonna clean that up for you. They're gonna add call outs. You don't have to wave your mouse around, um, that kind of thing. So in our demo environment here, so I've got a domain you can see, uh, and I don't have an editor for this stream, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna call out. Uh, so you can see that our domain here is techsnips.local, uh, and so if we do get a domain dot PDC emulator, uh, that is our PDC emulator. And if we did get a domain controller, uh, we only have one domain controller, but you know it's just a demo environment, so we don't need more than that. Uh, all right, so we have our PDC emulator. Uh, so I'm actually going to, uh, so in the demo, I'm gonna wanna output that first. So then what I'll do is I'll say PDC emulator, emulator equals, and then just copy this line and paste it down. And all right, so that's how you find the PDC emulator. Uh, so what's the next thing we need to do? We need to find all those event IDs uh, from the security log from that computer. So we can use, let's see, query event log. So we can use git win event. Uh, so we're gonna say computer name, it's gonna be PDC emulator. And then uh, my favorite parameter on git event win event is filter hash table. Some people like the other ones, but I really like cat, uh, cache table. So we're going to do hash table since this is my demo. Uh, and so filter hash table we have, well, here, for anyone that's not seen it before, let's see. Get win event. Oh, so it has filter hash table. Where is it? There it is. 
So we have a list of keys we can use. Wow, this looks terrible. And this, let's let's uh, make that a little bigger here. Here we go. Valid uh, valid key pairs. Uh, so we've got log name. Uh, so we know the log name's security because all the logon stuff's in the security log. Uh, what else do we need to know here? Uh, ID. So ID is the event ID. Uh, you may not know that from reading that, but I know that from experience. So you can just believe me on there. Well, actually, you don't have to believe me because remember, this is a snip. Uh, so we'll demonstrate. Uh, so filter hash table, what do we say? Log name equals security. Uh, ID equals lockout ID. Okay, cool. So now, well, I'm going to show you one of the problems with how I how I, I develop here. So first thing, uh, so I'm using, I'm using Git here on the left. I've got my VS Code integrated with my GitHub environment. So I'm, I'm saving this. Let's see what's a good uh, initial add doing stream. All right. Uh, and for those of you that would like to, uh, would like, <laughs> I got, I got to get one of those. I was watching one of the other contributors do a YouTube live stream. He had all the comments show up on his screen. I got to figure that out. Let's see. Where was I at? Uh, so we just did a commit. All right. And oh yeah, so one of the one of the one of the idiosyncrasies with how I develop is I've got uh, VS Code installed on my local computer, but my local computer isn't part of my demo Active Directory environment. So oh, bear with me here. We're actually just going to take and well, actually no, let's do a Control A, Control C, and we're going to jump back into our let's see. Uh, nope, we need. Oh, I thought I had the IC open. So we're gonna open up the IC here. Let's see. Run as administrator. And I'm just gonna take and paste this in here. And we can run some of this stuff. So first of all, we'll skip the demo. We'll skip the clean. Uh, we're gonna set the lockout ID variable. We'll set the, oh, here we go. You wanna see the PDC emulator in this one again, prod-dc. Uh, we'll set this PDC emulator. And then if we do a git win event, uh, this should return all of uh, locked out accounts. No accounts or no events were found. Okay, so then what we what I also will need to do uh, for to be able to record this as a demonstration to actually get some data uh, is we will need to lock out an account. Okay, so we'll, let's see. We'll see if we can do that on demand. I think we have another computer in here. Okay, so we do, so JK, I don't know that that's online. Okay, it isn't. Um, all right, let me, I'm gonna go turn that bad boy on. I, I've got this on my other screen. Uh, let's see. Okay. So thanks, Josh, I'm gonna use that VM. All right, so oh, that's gonna be really boring while I sit and wait for it. Um, so the next thing's actually, you know what? I may just stick in the ISC. It's not as exciting as the uh, as VS Code, but um, well, let's. Uh, so those are, those are the first things we need. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is uh, part of the demo. We're gonna say uh, let's see, parse the event. Because uh, that event is going to turn a, a raw message property, uh, and we can either regex that or use the properties of those events. So what we're going to say is events equals, and then we're going to copy this whole thing. Let's see, bam. And then as part of the demo, I will say events dot message. Okay, so. Uh, is really come on that should be should be up in my opinion uh, oh this is embarrassing this is why uh, you should never live stream things never work right Here. Okay, I'm gonna try 
try pulling up a Alright, no, it's not it's not uh it must not be up yet. Okay. Alright, we'll we'll get that in another minute or so. Okay, and I'll stop being impatient. Uh so but what we do know is that that's gonna have properties as well. So if we look at events.properties, that's gonna have some good information in it. Oh, firewall is on. I'm so glad you're on the you're on the stream, Josh. Thank you. Uh, so let's fix that. All right, give me a second here. Can't prepare for everything. Ah, uh, but that's the fun fun part uh, about. Actually, you know what? We can. That's the fun part about this. Okay, I don't do a whole lot of Azure stuff yet, so. Oh, wait, can we do this? I'm certain he would have enabled PowerShell remoting. <laughs> All right, next time for the notifications. I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Kind of under right. Beautiful. Valid. And that was the right name, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling the, the Azure portal stuff over. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, because it's, it's got some information that we don't need on a live stream. Um, hold on a second. Let me... This is kind of embarrassing, actually. I'm asking for help. We got a Slack channel that we all talk to each other in. Not sure if they all want their. Uh, they are. Oh, can I ping it? That's always. See, this is a great part about doing. Yeah, firewalls on, so it probably doesn't have. Uh, ping allowed. Oh, oh, he already said he's gonna fix it. Sweet. <laughs> Okay. Well, actually, you know what we can do is just do a. Oops. I'm, oh, here I am typing into the chat. Okay. So we're going to do a ping dash t. Okay. All right. So, anyway, while that's running, um, one of the things that I always like to do with my demos, and like I said, this is my demo, so we're going to do it my way, uh, is I like to take and demonstrate how to do something and then turn it into a function. I believe that PowerShell is a, whoop, a tool for building more tools. Uh, oh, dryer DB now. Sweet. Give me the one. Aha. Okay, sweet. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Uh, so, where were we at? Oh, yeah, we need to lock an account out, but I don't want to lock the account out that I'm using. Uh, so, let's see what we have here. Get a user filter.
Uh, so I'm just looking for users that are enabled. Uh, so we're gonna we're just gonna lock out user zero zero one, since we I'm assuming that actually I did actually there did actually see the snip that went along with those users. So user oh wait we want JK one. We're gonna say more choices. Use a different account. So tech snips is a domain. So user zero zero one and a blah password. It's going to say that login attempt failed. You guys don't believe me that I'm putting in a blob password. That's my password. Okay, login attempt failed. Oh, you know what? We may even have to do, uh, we may even have to set the account lockout attempt account. I don't know if that's been set in the demo environment. We're about to find out, though. Login attempt failed. And eventually we'll say account lockout, hopefully. You know what? I can just leave that blank. Can I? Yeah, I can just leave it blank. Okay, so let's uh, get a user, user 001, blah, blocked out. <coughs> okay, so it's not locking out. Maybe it's 10 times. Did I hit 10 times yet? But you know, this is this is the thing is, like I said, I didn't prepare for this. My, well, I did prepare. <laughs> I did prepare. I just didn't, I didn't do any of this legwork ahead of time because I just wanted to demonstrate you know, the whole process, I'm sure it's been 10 times, the whole process of recording a snip. So you can see that that user is not locking out. Uh, so I'm going to see if our default domain policy even has that enabled. So user config, and we're going to test my test my memory of group policy. Okay, obviously. Obviously, I don't remember if it's in user or security. Oh, here it is. Okay. Here we go. Account lockout policy. Okay. Oh, so there is there is no account lockout threshold. So we would never lock that user out. So let's let's actually set this. Uh, so I'm setting this to I don't know five. Pretty pretty standard, I guess. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll set those to so so there it goes. I mean, you guys have probably seen this before, but asking me what what the duration should be. Uh, so I'm, yeah, security is overrated. <laughs> only in our demo environment. I really want to emphasize this. Only in our demo environment, we do take serious security. I take security very seriously. I, I guess I'm not authorized to speak for tech snips themselves. Um, so okay, we're gonna anyway. We're gonna set the account lockout threshold to five. So now we should able to spam user before user 01. I'm not gonna know what hit him. Okay, so it's three, four. You know, I could probably write a script to do something like this, which is what I should, what I should do, what I should do, but sometimes the GUI calls. Okay, why I did set that. All right, so I guess the next thing is to make sure that the default policy applies to that uh, uh, that computer. Where was, uh, let's see, get AD. Oh, wait, I'm on prod DC. Actually, that de policy needs to apply to the domain controller then. Does it? Yes, it should. Okay, that's fine. Let's see. Uh, we haven't set it in that policy, but that should be okay. Oh, probably need to run a GP update. Oh, all contributors are TechSnips. So, okay, I can speak for I speak for uh, TechSnips apparently. Okay, so we're gonna enter P PS session win 10, oh no, 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 JP session win 10 dash one. Oh, yeah, I could just run invoke to command. Uh, that probably would have been better. Oh, but you know what? Okay, he probably didn't. Okay, that's fine. We will just, uh, didn't add. We left the firewall turned on because we are security conscious for some things in our demo environment. Um, See if I can remember this password. Uh, 
No. <laughs> only authorized to say good things about TechSimps. Well, I only have good things to say about TechSimps, so. Where did my window go? Verification cannot be contacted. You can disable. Well, we're not security conscious, so let's just disable some network level authentication. Not that I've ever done that before, apparently. Oh, they have to do that on the remote computer. Man, see, sometimes, um, sometimes demos are a little more complicated than you expect. Requires network load, but your Windows domain domain controlling every time your administrator on the remote computer. Okay, so I can't do that on the remote computer because I can't connect to it. Um, so I probably need to let's see who just texted me. Oh, not important. Okay. Uh bugger. Give me a second here. Word. We'll actually we'll just type in hey, Windows was the one doing that for me before. Wait, can I do at? Oh, I can. At works, but he's not watching anymore. Okay. Probably a firewall thing. I'm just asking him to disable the firewall for the demo. It's, I mean, this isn't a demo about firewalls, right? Let's see. So, you know what? I wonder if it's. Uh, let's see. Yes, I just typed in an old school command into the PowerShell window, and let's see, Jake. Nope, not on a different subnet. Okay. All right, he's going to jump back in and take a look at it. All right, so in the meantime, uh, while we are waiting for that, or er, wait a second, did I miss something on the Twitch chat? Oh, <laughs> what kind of jacked up VM? <laughs> Build your own stuff in the lab. That is a that is a great recommendation. At the same time, you were just talking about uh, controlling costs in the dev lab. So just just saying. Uh, okay. So uh, back to so we can get back to this for a sec second here. So. Um, so in my demos, I like to show how to do things, and then I also like to write a function. So what are we going to call this function? Undetermined. Oh, no auto close parens like in VS Code. Um, that connection. Oh, that's a good point. Testing the ports. Um, do you remember what port NLA, NLA uses? I do not. I, of course, I could Google it, uh, but don't need to. Uh, well, not going to, I guess, at the moment, because I believe the firewall is going to be dropped. So anyway, so we're going to write a function here. Oh, got someone paying me somewhere. Oh, friendly reminder that the password was changed. Uh, <laughs> you know, I knew that the password was changed, but I didn't actually... Uh, use the new password. You know it's gonna be really funny if it's just the new password issue. Login attempt failed. So apparently, domain controller password did not change. The domain admin password did not change. Uh, we can always verify that by looking at because I like to verify things. Um, password last set. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong wrong password last set. Let's get a real. Oh, no, that's that password didn't change. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, so what uh, what params? 
Uh, and maybe it was a different user potentially. Uh, okay, so uh, so what is this demonstration again? That's <laughs> something I always like to remind myself. Uh, so that was called how to discover the source of Active Directory user account lockouts using PowerShell. Uh, so the reason I brought that up, uh, the name again here, is that's going to determine what what the function uh, what's going to accept for parameters here. So I'm going to actually going to take a username. Holy freaking mackerel! If I can type a string uh, and get it, a user spits out. I love being able to type things. So here we go. Get it a user spits out user with the SAM account name. That's what we want to use. I believe we might have to change this. Depends on the output of the events. And I got someone else picking me here. Let's see. Okay, something is wrong with that VM. Um, Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a run as and see if that works. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so let's get this user locked out. Let's back up a second. This is kind of it's kind of we're going all over the place here. Uh, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a more. We're gonna run as a different user. I should have done this before. Um, that was what user zero zero one, blah, user zero zero one, blah. Ah, there we go. Bam, locked out. Okay, we got to figure it out. So, uh, okay. It would have been simpler to just do that from the beginning. I'm just making sure and deleting that. <laughs> okay, so now that the account is locked out, uh, we should be able to run this get win event on our PDC emulator. And we should, yes. So we got two of them. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, why was there, you know, okay, so that is because, well, at least in a multi-domain environment. What? Someone else just texted me if it's watching. I have a voice like an angel. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, back up a second. Uh, I have to work work on my focus apparently. Okay, so at least in a multi-domain multi-domain control environment, uh, when a lockout happens, uh, the PDC always has the latest password, and so uh, there will be two. Well. Well, will the lockout event happen on the... I believe the lockout event will happen twice in that case on the receiving domain controller and on the PDC. Uh, it's speculation, though. I don't have an environment to actually test it. But let's... let's uh, let's. So I'm going to take those events. I'm going to assign it to the events variable, and we can at least go... Ev or, pfft, I'm typing out what I've already typed. <laughs> we can at least go events dot message all right and here I'm gonna make this a little bigger here so user account was locked out caller computer name prod DC user account was locked out so one of them has has or no they both have one of them has a caller computer name fill out the other one does not interesting okay so I did not expect that did we lock it out twice? No. Okay, so what that means is clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. And we should be... We should be... Uh, let's see, let's, let's see... Okay, so we have a very wise man once said... Um... Okay, so the client system, the client systems, domain controllers, and the PDC notifies the client system password was wrong. Oh, 
Okay, so okay, so so what I'm imagining is that uh, this PDC is acting as both the uh, these cl the client. Well, I don't know what to call it client. Oh wait, two different. Did, was it two different accounts? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm blind. I'm blind. Okay. Okay, so it's not as complicated as I thought. So we can see here the account name. Uh, we got user01. Whoops. We got user01 up here. We got account name test down here. But were did I did they really happen run one run after the other? Where am I going here? They did. Someone else is on here. Oh, well, yeah, that's you know one of the things of working with a shared lab environment is you got to deal with other people. Uh, okay, so, but that's good because now we have two examples. I'd be willing to bet that someone else was watching the stream and one of the other contributors and was helping me out. appreciate that. Um, and so what we need to do, so we've got this message. And actually what I'm going to do here is since we have multiple events, which I wasn't expecting, I'm going to switch this to just selecting the first in, the first index, uh, and, which is zero dot message. All right, so here we go. Uh, so this one's got all of these properties, and we can brilliantly write an awesome regex uh, to grab each of these properties out of here. And I've done that before. It's if you feel really good writing regex, that works. Uh, but instead, uh, we got the properties. And again, I'm going to take this one down to zero. Uh, whoop, F8 again. Uh, and so there we can see. Uh, let's actually here, I'm gonna one, run these one right after the other. Uh, so I can kind of show you guys what I'm thinking here. Uh, so there we can see, and and I know that the properties on here because I worked with events before. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, I got to figure out how to do that not in the microphone. Um, and so I'm just using that information from before to pull that out of the air. Okay, so we got the uh, the message here. So security ID. Oh, this is interesting. So user one is actually index one. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I was expecting account name. Okay, well that's that makes it. So if we look at events, what the heck? Oh, that's what I've learned before. So if we look at events one dot properties, uh, the first one is the username. Okay, that, that's 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 good. Uh, so then, uh, so we know that uh, that properties zero is the username. So let's see. Username events get that capitalized zero dot properties zero is the username and so the caller computer that's where the source is um, let's see source computer so if for instance uh, you're dealing with someone who changed their password and then now their account gets locked out every 30 minutes. Uh, it happens. I've seen this happen a lot. You ask them, oh, hey, did you change your password on your phone? Oh, nah, don't worry about it. I got that taken care of. And then you find out that, right here, I'm trying to talk and type. <laughs> and then you find out uh, find out that uh, they had their iPad also connected to their email account. And so that caller computer name will show you your, your exchange uh, server. So properties. So caller computer. Let's bring this back up. I forgot which one, which one it was already. Uh, let's see, caller computer name, account name. Okay. So that, that's, let's see, that's who wrote it. All right, account levels locked out, it's account name, so caller computer name, prod dash DC. Okay, so it's going to be the second one here because you'll notice uh, that the value for the account name under the subject uh, has a dollar sign after it. So that's specifying a computer account. Uh, and the caller computer name here is without that, and that matches here, so it's index of one properties uh, caller computer I'm just gonna kind of make that a little uh, better to understand there okay so now we have uh, you notice I'm, I'm putting in comments here this is both for uh, for me while I'm reading along uh, to remember and also not also for the user, because uh, what what I'll do is I'll actually take this code, I'll share it, I'll put it in my repo. I've got a tech snips demo repo, uh, GitHub slash the Posh Wolf, and also it'll be in the tech snips repo as well. Uh, I'll I 
actually not sure if we have, well, let's actually check. So we're going to take a little detour down tech snips. Uh, so we're going to pull up, let's see, how to use Docker Compose. Uh, he runs a script there, but I don't think he has a script he wrote. Here we go. We're, not to two mine and harm, we're going to skip mine. We'll look at, we'll look at, uh, who's this? Adam, we'll look at this guy. It's one of his. So we, okay. So maybe that's a feature request that I should put in, or maybe help figure out how to do, uh, is put a link to these, um, to the snips because we actually so I got github slash the posh wolf tech snips yes github tech snips uh, so here we've got some stuff that Adam's done with Airtable uh, but also snip scripts so this is where we've got the repo with all the scripts for all of our uh, demos that we've done that do have scripts uh, okay so we're gonna end that little detour and switch back here okay so uh, long story short this script will be available and that's why I put comments in it. Okay, so now we're gonna do is we're gonna take a function. Okay, so we're gonna say get 80 users. So we're getting an 80 users lockout, uh, lockout, uh, what should we call it, lockout. Uh, and this again is where I always refer to, let's see, the name of the snip that I'm doing. So how to discover the source. Okay, we're call, so we'll call it get 80 account lockout source. It has search. Yep, sweet. Oh, okay, I must have missed. Uh, I must have missed where you were referencing there. I gotta get better at this. This chat thing. Okay. Uh, okay. Get eighty user lockout uh, source. Okay. Yeah, that's where we were. Okay. So string Sam account name, and I. So the. I'll, I'll have to demonstrate this for you. Uh, but the the get. The Active Directory commands are really weird in that uh, it, you can't pipe output from like get ad user for instance to a custom commandlet uh, using the here I'll actually write it out here. Let's see parameter value from by, by, by property name is true. So I'm doing that to accept value from the pipeline. So with normal commandlets, you can say, I'm doing a little soapbox here, I guess. Uh, you can say alias name. Uh, and so this, and that would make uh, this parameter, so the same account name parameter, that would make it so that it can accept a pipeline output that has a property with either the name, or excuse me, a property that's called either name or same account name. And I typically like to be pretty uh, vanilla here and leave this one as name and, and this one as same account name. Uh, but it won't work with the Active Directory commandlets and all. I can show you that actually. So you actually have to leave this one as same account name and clear that one out. Uh, okay, so okay, so we got our parameter block. Uh, since I will be accepting pipeline, or I want to be accepting pipeline input, we're gonna do the end process. And and this would be where I should say you should check out the snip on begin process and in tech snips. Let's see. But is there one? Let's find out. Actually, PowerShell. Um, PowerShell begin. You understanding script blocks, objects, repositories, modules, function parameter sets. Okay, so anybody watching that knows PowerShell that wants to be a tech snips contributor, anyone that is. Or maybe it's pipeline. Maybe there's something under pipeline. Objects, manage repos, pester module. How to tell when a command won't work with the PowerShell pipeline? Okay. Well, we don't have a we don't have a good snip. Post it here if you find it. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, so we, we don't have a snip for that. Uh, so this is one of the things as a contributor that I could go for people who don't know what tech snips is. I could go to our board and right now I have it filtered by, oh, oh yeah, no, oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't find one. All right, so what I could do is I could see that, that we don't have a snip for that. Uh, and here, 
let's just turn the filtering off. We actually got a lot of cards in here. Um, this is going through the editing process and all to published. Uh, so like uh, we've got a contributor here that's it's submitted one for how to install the Windows routing and remote access service to support an Azure side to site VPN. So he actually submitted a snip on uh, setting up the Azure side of it. So he's now submitting a snip on how to set up the local side of it. Uh, so we can actually put in a card here. Um, I don't want to do it because I don't have a lot. I've here. Let me let me just show you why I don't want to. I want to. Why I don't want to filter. Whoops. Filter. Why don't Why I don't want to submit another snip because I've already got. Uh, let's see. I got I got a few that I need to finish recording, including this one. So we should probably get back to that. Okay. So uh, begin process end block. Uh, okay. Let's let's talk here. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, for any object coming down the pipeline, we know that the PDC emulator is going to be the same. So I'm going to, I like copy paste. If you don't, I'll go watch someone else's stream. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, um, so we're gonna copy paste that. So we know the PDC emulator is gonna be the same every single time. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because in the pipeline, the process block is what runs for every object passed to it. Begin process, begin block runs once. Okay, so process block. This is where we would say for each user, we're gonna say events equal, and again, I'm just copying and pasting, copying and pasting. Let's see, events equals, and then of course, the ISE isn't as cool as VS Code where it will actually auto indent. Um, I usually do this in VS Code, but you know, like I said, I'm, oh, maybe we just install VS Code on the domain controller in the demo environment, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, so we got events, and then for each event, whoops, event and events. Actually, you know, here we're gonna. I'm gonna pull this out here because I like to show everything. All events. Okay, so we're gonna do it for each. Uh, oh, someone else is texting me. Sorry, guys. One of the things of doing a live stream is people still text you. Okay. Nothing too important. And, oh, okay. So I, okay. Someone else texted me and said that it, that said they weren't important, but I'm not mentioning them on the stream. They might be watching. Uh, okay. So for each event, uh, so what we want to do, we're getting the one event ID, so they're all going to be the same. So we don't need to do anything special about different types of events. So we can actually just return the PS custom object. I love PS custom objects. Uh, and so instead of returning just the straight event, uh, because that's pretty boring, it doesn't have easily accessible data that you want. So we're going to say username equals. Uh, let's see, event, because for each, don't need to do an index dot properties, username equals zero. So again, this is why I do uh, do those comments, keeps up with, uh, uh, lets me reference them in the, in the past. So we, uh, we'll call this, do you want to call a source computer or caller computer? Ah, oh, man, I'm getting stuck up on the dumbest things. We'll call it caller computer, because that's what the event log refers to it as. So event dot properties one, and that's really easy to change if I wanted to change. Okay, and then the other thing that's probably going to be time, probably going to be important is the timestamp, and oh, let's see, I think it's just called. Well, instead of just making something up, I'm actually going to look at it. So events zero, so time created. Whoops. Event dot time time created. Okay. Cool, and that's already a date time, so that will be a date time instead of a string. At least I, well, I hope it will. We'll find out. Okay, so what else do we need out of there? We already know the ID. We already got them. We know it's gonna be a lockout. We know it's four seven four oh ahead of time, so not really any reason to return that. I could see if, if you were writing it and you wanted to do that, you probably could. Uh, let's see, login ID, we don't need that. And we know this is coming from the PDC, so we don't need to return the subject. And we can look at the SID if we wanted to. We don't need to return that. Okay, cool, we're good, we're good. All right, in my opinion, and you know what, that's what matters here. So, all right, so for each event, 
Oh, okay, so we have a problem. So this, ah, I didn't actually run this before. I forgot, this is actually dot value. Okay, dot value. That's where I get, that's where I, what I get for just shouting around that I actually remember these things. Uh, okay, so let's try that again. So for each event in events, bam. Okay, so caller computer, so test. Uh, so in my experience, I've seen that caller computer come up empty when it's uh, when it's a computer not part of the domain that's that's trying to access it, but then sometimes it picks up an IP. I'm not sure why that's empty. I could sit here and speculate, um, but we're not going to do that because I'm not. This isn't a speculating uh, demo. This is a PowerShell demo, so we're going to keep doing PowerShell. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste this down into my process block, uh, and so. So one of the things that I see a lot of people do is they have a they create they create an object an array ahead of time it's like 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 this and I do this sometimes too it, it makes sense sometimes and then they'll do out plus equals I'm just preaching here uh, out plus equals ps custom object um, I don't like that unless you're going to be sorting or doing something with the data afterwards uh, the reason being is is since this is going to be uh, I'm setting this up to accept pipeline input. The idea being that you could do, oh, let me give actually search 80 account. You could use search 80 account to go locked out. Uh, so we can see that there's two of them. And what I want to do here is be able to just pipe that to, uh, what do we call this? Get 80 user lockout source. Uh, and so I want it to spit out objects as it finds them and not all right at the end. So that's, that's my thought process here in case you're wondering. All right, so then the end, I don't actually need to do anything in my end block, so we'll go ahead and just close it. Uh, all right. So we're gonna, I'm gonna add this to my session. I wanna do, I wanna actually test it, make sure it works. So I'll do exactly what I said I wanted to be able to do. AD user lockout source. Sweet. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. There's a problem here. So I, uh, okay. So I, I specify accepting a, a username, but I didn't actually use that username anywhere. Okay. Um, uh, so what we need to do is say, um, can we filter? So we can either filter up here here using aware or filter in the for each we're gonna do aware object dot properties excuse me dot oh wait, wait properties what was the account name again zero I should just remember that I'm not that old yet dot value uh, equals sand name okay bam all right so that should get us what we want okay you know what I should be doing I should never test a commandlet with pipeline input first let's do a get a user lockout source same account name we'll specify user 001 okay so it worked that time all right so then if we go to test we get test and then if we go blah we get Nothing. Okay, perfect. So then if we uh, do that again, we should now just get one for each. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay, that's what, we, that's what we expect. So good thing. I'm really glad I have multiple events in here. Otherwise, I might not have caught that. All right. So the other option there is in, in the for each, just do if username equals. Uh, and another way we could write this commandlet is we could say that we could say specify the string as an array. Well, we could do that actually. So if it, if we did specify the string as an array, then we wouldn't have to do this where objects. Uh, well, what do we still have to do? So if so if that array contain. Well, we're we're not going to do that. I like the pipeline. The pipeline's amazing. So I really would rather have it. You specify all the users and then have this do one thing. Okay, cool. And again. I'm running the demo, so we're going to do it that way. But, you know, it's, I could I could see it being useful either way. All right, so the last thing that I need to do for this demo to be able to record it, because my ultimate goal here is to record it, 
is to have any examples of how to use this function. Don't want to just write a function and say, there you go, you got it, cool. All right, so we could say get 80 user lockout source, and count name, uh, user 001. Actually, no, what we're gonna do is up here at the beginning, I'm gonna specify a test account. Let's see, user equals, and the reason I'm doing this is that if someone else came along and used this script, they don't have to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run search 80 account multiple times, or sorry, not search 80 account. I'm going to run my custom function multiple times. So I want, uh, so I want someone to be able to come up here and s just change this one spot. And oh, I'm pointing at my monitor. Like you guys can see where I'm pointing. Um, so I want, oh, what up guys? I got some, some old work folks watching. Hey, uh, anyway, <laughs> I did not expect that. Okay. So uh, where was that? Okay, so if, so if someone else wanted to use this, they could actually come in here and, and change this user variable to be whatever they wanted. Okay, so, uh, same account name. Uh, okay, we said, oh, I freaking forgot what I said. So user. <laughs> so user, so then if we actually add this variable into our session user equals user zero zero one we should now be able to run get 80 user lockout source bam so there's that user or we could say okay so what other examples get ad oh no no search i like search ad account let's see locked out piping that to get 80 user and remember the the pipe works because we have that value from pipeline by property name equals true. So get 80 user lockout source. Uh, that's all we need. We don't actually need to specify users. Yeah. So there. So there. So that's the output we expect to get. And then of course, if uh, we're gonna copy this one again, if someone wanted to uh, send this lockout information to. Uh, maybe an auditor or a manager or something, and I'll mention that in the uh, in the recording. Of course, we could say CSV path equals C. Of course, I'm blanking on the dumbest things. Uh, the things that are really important are the path where you put your CSV. Uh, well, we need a lot. You know, let's just let we'll just keep it simple. We'll just keep it simple. Users, tech, steps. You know what? You guys can say hi to the uh, the attorney that has an office next to me. Uh, let's see. So, uh, we'll call it user lock. Oh my goodness, user lockout dot csv. Okay, cool. So then we'll pipe this to an export csv. Uh, CSV path, no type in oh, no type information and force in case I have to run it multiple times and overwrite it. And then we'll go dot CSV path and that will allow us to actually read it. So here for anyone watching that wants to see what this is gonna look like. Okay, cool. So then we look at the CSV path, bam. So that's our CSV. And of course, if I was Oh, I'm pretending like I'm recording it now. Of course, if I was running this, it would on a computer that had something like Excel installed on it. You'd actually be able to read that uh, in a spreadsheet, uh, but not right now. Okay, so uh, so the last thing. Oh, let's name our regions. Um, make it a function. So for anyone, it looks like we picked up a few extra people. Uh, for anyone that's just, uh, do you say tuning in on a live stream? I have no idea. Um, so we we're just picking up the live stream. Uh, so we're not only writing a script on how to find user lockouts or the source of user lockouts using PowerShell, but I'm also doing it to record a, t a snip for tech snips. Um, we have talking about that quite a bit. Let's see. Okay, I'm being really awesome here and giving it really good names. Uh, and we'll call it this uh, ad user lockout sort. Oops. And you can see in this list, these are some of the other other demos that I've done. Uh, just a little teaser there. Uh, oh, okay. So re region info you need to know. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, what was the lockout timeout? Have we surpassed that yet? I think we did. 
policy settings. Um, Cause we'll, I'll, what I'll have to do is I'll have to lock out a user 30 minutes. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna have to lock out another user too. Uh, so, so the next step, now that I've got this demo, well, you know, I say the next step, we're gonna run through this one last time to make sure that I'm actually, it's actually gonna work. Uh, let's see, cause the last thing I wanna do is be in the middle of recording it for TechSnips and then have to re do it no i've done that plenty of times so it's not like i'm i'm new to that <laughs> all right so we're going to assign that to the events variable and i guess you guys have all walked through this and if you want to stick around for while i do the recording um i'll actually walk through and talk about what i'm doing each of these steps uh let's see okay so everything is working like i expected okay cool and we just tested that function we wrote so we're not gonna do that okay Cool. So, so typically when I record, um, hmm, actually I'm going to make another region here. Let's see. Region initial stuff. Cause parsing is kind of a long region. So we're going to call end region. Uh, I will, oh, that did not end region parse the event all events end region okay so did i just actually i'm doing this for readability uh so this way when when i while i do uh did i oh yeah so while i while i do while i recorded it it makes more sense aha so bam so there we go initial stuff parse the event okay Cool. So, so typically when I record for tech snips, um, I'm using I use uh, OBS, Open Broadcaster Studio. It's open source piece of software. Oh, uh, actually, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna copy this. So remember, I got this funky development methodology to where I've got my local VS Code. So I'm saving this locally, uh, local to my computer in VS Code, so I can let's see, final, God, final, getting hung up on the dumbest things here. <laughs> <laughs> before record uh so that i can i can save this to uh save this to git and then of course for those of you that are familiar with github of course uh back it up worst comes to worst my computer dies i still got it in github okay yeah sweet okay uh so we'll switch back over to our server uh so typically when i record for tech snips uh I, I use OBS, but I'm using that to broadcast to Twitch right now. Um, so I, oh, and, ooh, I, so I, we don't usually do snips with people's faces on them. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll probably turn that off while we're recording. Uh, I don't know if OBS can record and let's find out. Okay. So it's. Oh, you, oh, what? Maybe I should, hold on a second. I've actually got my stream pulled up, so I'm going to pause the stream. I'll probably drop that. Okay. <laughs> that was smart. I'm brilliant. Okay. Uh, so I just paused. I had the Twitch stream open watching it as I was going. Okay, so what I'm going to do, does that pause the chat, though? I have no idea. Will someone send me a quick chat if you're in, if you're in the Twitch stream? Okay, I don't know if it's actually picking it up or not. All right, anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick test record. Uh, so right now I'm actually recording uh, to save this to, uh, save this to, send this to TechSnips. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and stop that recording. Uh, let's see, bring up the video. And... Hey, it works. Okay, so cool. All right, so then, uh, okay, so to, to record for TechSnips, so I'm gonna run through and do this demo. Uh, I'm gonna turn my face off for a minute because I don't think, blow up the font size and eyes. Oh yeah, 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 font size. That's a good point. So one of the uh, one of the recording guidelines for TechSnips is a minimum font size of 18 point. So what I do, that's just a little easier than changing font size, is just zoom in. On ISC, so you can see down here, I've got 200%. Oh, you can't actually see down there since my face is covering it. So down here, I've got 200%. Uh, thanks for that reminder. 
So what I'm going to do is turn my face off, and then we're going to do a recording. So you guys are going to be here listening while I actually record this to submit to TechSnips. Uh, so, so for the recording, we always do a, a short pause and then a quick introduction, uh, and then we walk walk through it. So I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to record to build something and then record it for TechSnips. All right, so we're recording in three, two. All right, so let's walk through how to use PowerShell to find uh, user lockout sources. Uh, okay, so that's <laughs> that almost always happens for me on my first. I'm gonna, I just stopped recording. On my first run through, is I always forget what to say. Um, so, oh, you know what? Also, I just realized how how bad is the audio coming through for my. So I've got a server rack in the same room that I'm recording on, and I usually cover it up and I didn't uh, give me just a second um, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute my microphone because I'm gonna set my headphones down I'll be right back Yeah, I'm gonna have to add elevator music to the list of things to come up with. Because <laughs> I noticed that Windows, when he has his, he had some nice music in the background. Okay, so that should sound a little better. Um, uh, one thing to mention is, you know, our contributors don't all have like perfect recording studios. I'm not. A, I'm not the exception. I don't. Um, I'm in my office. I have my server rack. I have. A, I built a cabinet around it. So I can at least close it up. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so when recording this. Um, uh, so typically, I like to like to say w what I'll be doing in the script, and then of course a brief uh, ten to fifteen second quick, you know, why this was handy. So we're gonna try that again, uh, and I'm gonna actually, or I guess you need. I actually, yeah, no, I actually have a green screen here. Check this out. See, but the whole point of having a green screen is you don't don't see the mess behind me. <laughs> Oh, you can actually kind of see it there. It's it's not perfect. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. You can get webcams that'll do it, supposedly, but they're really expensive. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so yeah, so tell them what I'm going to do, and then a brief introduction to why it's handy, uh, kind of relate it to the viewer. And, again, this is all brief stuff, and you probably hear the truck going by in the background. Uh, okay. So we're going to try this again in three, two. Oh, crap. Uh, no, we're not trying this again because I'm going to turn myself off. I don't know. Well, hold on a second. Let's... I'm going to... How, how would you feel if... Um... I'm, just, I'm I'm asking to see if it's okay if I just leave myself on the recorded video. But we haven't actually done that yet, so I'm I think it's cool. I don't know. What do you guys think? Quick quick poll for people watching. Is it better with my face on it or not? Hmm. Rough cut. Well, they I've put a lot of work into this for it to be a rough cut. Uh, for people that aren't familiar with us. Um, Oh yeah, clear the terminal. Wow. Yeah. No. See, I'm I'm just all over being live streamed and forgetting all my recording etiquette. Um, hard to edit. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. So I'm getting the official no uh, from the boss. Boss. Uh, we don't actually have a boss. I shouldn't say it like that. Uh, from the man who makes the decisions about video quality. Uh, so. Uh, so, oh, and also for those people that don't know Rough Cut, so we have two, uh, so TechSnips has two levels of videos, one that have a lot of setup uh, that go into it like uh, like we've got now, um, and other ones where you just go through and you do something, you talk about what you're doing, and you submit it. Those are Rough Cuts. Um, I'm putting a lot of work, putting enough work into this, and it's not a Rough Cut, in my opinion. 
Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn myself off. I'll be back. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so now what we're gonna do, I'm going to walk through the recording, so it's going to sound like I'm recording it. Um, but i got to figure out what to say first, so maybe I'll turn myself back on for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to talk about what, what it is, what it's doing, and then... Uh, so actually, let me let me show you one other thing. I'm kind of like, if you change position, you work. Let me go. Let me show you. All right. If I if I move myself, it'll work. But now nah, we'll figure that out another time. Okay. So, uh, so all of the videos have a description uh, that that each contributor comes up with when they submit it. So in the description, well, I don't guess I don't need to click into it. Um, can you? Here, let me make that a little bigger. Uh, so I've got this scenario where a CEO calls you for the third time in a row at night on your on-call duty. So maybe I'll mention that um, to kind of tie it in with the description. So unlike your CEO, you like to sleep, right? CEOs don't sleep from what I've seen. Uh, so, okay, so let's switch back to here. Okay, so I'm going to turn myself off. I'm going to be a pro and relate this to the viewer. Uh, in three, two... So let's walk through how to use PowerShell uh, to find the walkout source of a user in Active Directory. So I want you to imagine that it's the middle of the night. Uh, you get a, the third phone call in a row from your CEO, uh, and they are demanding to know why they're being locked out. Uh, and you could spend, I don't know, what does it take, uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes to get to get uh, logged into your, to your VPN, remote it into your server, bring up Event Viewer, blah, 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 find that event. Or... You can use my favorite tool, PowerShell, to write a script. So let's walk through that. So uh, the, the first thing I want to walk through is the uh, note to the editor. I'm going to turn myself down a little bit. I'm coming across really loud. Okay, so the first first thing the first thing we need to know is the event ID. Uh, let me back up. So the first thing we need to know uh, is, of course, the user we're going to look for. Look for. So I've got a so I've got a test account here, uh, user zero zero one. We're going to be really really creative here. And then the lockout ID is actually four seven four zero, and I I know it's because I looked it up. And so we're going to assign that to the lockout ID variable, so we can use it here on down the script. And then, so with lockouts, all the oh gosh darn it. Okay, no, we're stopping. We're stopping. So so I, I actually screwed up here like royally. So I, so for those of you that have been here since the beginning, I have this section at the beginning called clean. I have this in all of my demos, uh, and I always run it before I record. I obviously forgot to this time because I'm a moron. Okay, <laughs> we're going to try that again. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. All right, so all right, we're gonna it just this is this is how the snips go. All right, so I'm gonna turn myself off. We're gonna record in three, two. So let's walk through using PowerShell to find the source of a of a user's lockout in Active Directory. So I want you to imagine that it's the middle of the night. You've getting repeated phone calls from the CEO who demands to know why they've been locked out. Well, you know it takes. 20, 30 minutes to get VPN'd in, pull up the event viewer after you've already peed to the server, and then find that lockout and then look for the source. You know, you can keep doing that or great opportunity to learn some PowerShell. So the first couple of things we'll need to know uh, to be able to do this with PowerShell is I've, I've got a test user that I'm going to be using, calling it user001. Uh, the lockout ID for an account lockout is 4740. And the way that lockouts work is they will always be. The way that lockouts work is that the PDC emulator, the PDC emulator, will always have an event in their event log for the lockout. And so we need to find the PDC emulator. So we need to find the PDC emulator using the get eighty domain uh, commandlet out of the Active Directory module. And we can see in our demo environment here, it's just prod DC. And so then I'm going to assign that to the PDC emulator variable. And then what we'll need to do is query the event log on that computer uh, for that event ID. So you can see here I'm using the filter hash table command that. So you can see here I'm using the filter hash table uh, parameter. It's my favorite parameter. 
and specifying the log name and the ID. So the ID, so the ID there is 4740 from before. So if we run this, we've got a couple of users that have been locked out. Uh, and what I want to do is is to then parse that for the pertinent information and return just that. So I'm going to sign. I'm going to take that get win event. So I'm going to take that same commandlet. I'm going to run it again and assign it to the events variable. And then we can look at the message property of events. And then we can look at the message property uh, for that variable. I want you to see this, this is all the information we need. So we've got the, uh, let's see, we've got the username. We've got the caller computer name. So the caller computer name, that's where the lockout originated from. Uh, so we can either we can either parse that with regex because regex is amazing or we could save ourselves some time and look at the properties property of those events because you can see here that we've got all that information from before and so looking at this list and comparing it to what we've got above we can see that index of zero is the username and index of one and index of one is the caller computer name uh, and so I've got that I've got that written out here, and then we need to specify this specifically the value on that property as well. So let me, let me, so if we look at just that property zero, so the username, you can see that it's actually a an, an object with a with a property of value. So we're gonna look at the value of property of that object, and the computer name is the same thing as well, but index of one. And and so then if we've got multiple events, we're going to, of course, want to run it through a for each loop. And so I'm doing that here. And so I'm doing that here and I'm outputting it as a PS custom object. So I'm grabbing the information that I think is important and then just outputting it as its own custom object. So if we run this for each loop, uh, we can see that we had we had two lockouts, one for users, one for users, user one and one for the test user. So then the so after after doing something like that, the last thing I love to do, the last thing I like to do is to make it into a function. So of course, I'm going to have to do this over and over and over. So I don't want to leave it as just a snippet of code. So I've got a function here that I've written called get 80 user lockout source. And this takes uh, in the parameter lock, you can see that it takes one parameter called Sam account name. And I've called it Sam account name so that I can accept uh, pipeline input. So you can see value from pipeline by property name equals true. And the idea being that you can output get 80 user or search 80 account uh, to this commandlet and it'll work. I love the pipeline. It's great. Uh, and so in the, for the begin block, uh, the PDC emulator, that's going to be the same for every single object passed to it. So that's why it's in the begin block. And then the process block, uh, you can see that I have that same commandlet from before, except line 78. I'm using the where object command commandlet to filter uh, for just the events that are like that one user. And then for each event in events, I'm of course outputting that, that custom object from before. So I'm gonna add this to my session. And then, so we've got some examples here. So the first thing, uh, the base use of it is just specifying the parameter with a username. So we've got my user from before, my test account. If I run that, it just outputs one object because it's just one user that's been locked out once and so then if i run a search 80 account for locked out users and i want to run this first to see if there are any so there aren't any currently so what i'm going to do is we're going to lock one out real quick let's see we're just going to run something as or run something as a different user and we had what user was user one All right, there we go. So we got an, we got an account that's locked out. Uh, so now if we run search AD account again, we actually have a locked out account. So then we can of course pipe that to get AD user lockout source. I'm actually gonna say that again because I think I might have hit the keyboard at the same time. So then we can pipe that to get AD user lockout source, 
and you can see that we've got two entries this time. So one for just now, so 1020, and one for uh, earlier at 930. So uh, the last the the last example I wanted to give is outputting this to a CSV uh, because you may need to give this information to someone else. They can look at it in a spreadsheet or whatnot. And so I'm going to specify a CSV path. And then I'm going to run the search AD account. So I'm the same same thing from before, but I'm piping that output to the export CSV uh, commandlet and specifying the CSV path that I had just now. And of course, no type information and force to override it if it's there. And then looking at that CSV file, here's what it looks like. So we've got just one user that was locked out, um, but in this case, it's getting all events. Uh, and, it, and if you had uh, and if you had a program to open uh, CC files, it would of course open in that. So I don't have Excel installed in this DC uh, for good reason. <laughs> so anyway, so that is how you use PowerShell to find the lockout. So that is how you use PowerShell to find the source of a user account lockout in Active Directory. All right, cool. So for those of you that are still on the stream, uh, that is, that's how I record my snips. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. I want to see if I have any people commenting. Oh, there's the, there's the dog again. Uh, but you notice that I, that I, that when background noises like that came up, I just paused, uh, waited for it to end and kept going. So we've got editors, uh, that will actually go through and edit them. So let me let me let me show you that process actually. So because I I'm not gonna sit and edit this. I don't want to do that. Um, I could. It wouldn't turn out as well as the editors that we have. Uh, but okay. So this. Uh, so here's the video. It, it uh, oh nope. That's not the video that it output because it wasn't 11 seconds. So I'm gonna do a refresh. Uh, so the video output was seven and a half minutes. We try to keep it less than, I don't know, 10 or 15. It's pretty flexible at, depending on the content and delivery and whatnot. Um, so I have a naming convention that I like to use. Take snips. Uh, and since this one is an active directory, I say I have a naming convention, convention and I always forget what it is. <laughs> Uh, user lock out source. Uh, and so then I also, uh, I copy this up to my uh, OneDrive so that I have these in case uh, TechSnips ever bites the dust. I still have all the videos I've submitted. Uh, but one thing, a part of becoming, part of contributing to TechSnips uh, is that once you create the video and submit it, it's now the property of TechSnips. So I can't actually take that video and upload it elsewhere and use it unless, you know, I want to break the agreement. Yeah, I know it is kind of funny. Uh, so, uh, so, so we've got a, a video submission form. Uh, and there's a, if you ever become a contributor, we've got a link for it. We'll get, well, I can, <laughs> we got a link for it. You can see the link for it. Um, so anyway, so the title, you can see some of the other ones I've submitted. The title needs to match exactly with the uh, snip that you're submitting. So I'm going to copy this title and paste it in here. And we're going to select the file. And this uploads it to text snips. Let's see. Uh, I put it in vids, you dummy. Uh, oh. Of course, it doesn't. It already it already synced it. I spent too long talking about it. And it already synced. Oh no! Did not want to create a new folder. Let's see. We're gonna go. I am just clicking to click. Apparently, okay. Sort by date instead of reading because I'm too lazy to read. All right. That was yeah. Today's the 29th. Okay. So I add it. I'm gonna upload it. So any prerequisites? Uh, this one is. Uh, let's see. Active Directory module. Uh, let's see. Was there like good prerequisite permissions to security log on PDC? So that's something that not everyone would have working in Active Directory. At least everyone, not everyone should have, in my opinion. 
Uh, all right, so the last thing, SNP recommendations, this is a fairly new, well, uh, I don't know what's considered fairly new, a couple weeks old. Um, if you have a pot in, yeah, yeah, you can just upload them directly. Uh, it's true, but easier this way, in my opinion. Well, specifically for me, for me, I I do things my own way because that's the way it works best. For, well, not only the way that works best, it's the way that I do it, and I'm used. To, uh, sad point. Okay, uh, snip re snip recommendations. So this is so. Uh, let's let's pull. Up. Let's see if if that actually had some recommendations prerequisites. I thought for sure that one had prereqs in it, or not prereqs. Snip re recommendations. I know mine did. Uh oh. Snip recommendations aren't coming through. So what's supposed to happen is we get a nice maybe maybe I'm just not looking in the right place, but we're supposed to get a nice list of other snips that you should look at once you once you've uh, watched a snip. And so that's what that's what this list here I got is for. Uh, so what other snips would be useful? Let's see, Active Directory user. Oh yeah, so let's check. Okay. Ah, uh, oh, so here's a good one. This this would be a good recommended one by Josh. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it in here. This is this is kind of the boring part of submitting a snip, but it's hey, it's good to know if you're gonna ever gonna do this directory user. Let's see. Oh, and what do you know? We've got two with almost the same title. Okay, we're just gonna use one of them. Okay, so, oh, of course I can just hit enter and find a whole list. Okay, so I'm gonna copy, copy link address, unlock a user, well, now, uh, unlock a user, yeah, that may, that's actually a really good one, if you find a locked out user, unlock a user, okay, cool. Remove a user, create a user, reset a user password, that's a good one too. Let's see, import users via CSV, move an active direct. You know, I wonder if I can create group, group, not nah, groups are all. Drive, object, find great. Okay, so we're gonna stick with the users, unlock a user. You know, just for the fun of it, we're gonna add in, cause this is, these, these are all good related ones in my opinion. Create a user, oh. <laughs> Sound like I'm just talking myself up. <laughs> no. Uh, See, reset import users. Yeah, we'll get that one as well. All right, cool. All right, so uh, and then uh, if you ever do want to become a part of a contributor for tech snips, related content shows up on the play page. Oh, okay, sweet. So if we let's go back and look at this, uh, we're gonna we're not gonna give Matt a bad time, hard time here. So if we go play now, oh, oh, I actually watched this one recently. Ooh, learning about Docker. Uh, no, we're gonna start where I left off. Um, okay, so uh, so Adam gave me a link. I'm gonna bring up. Oh, of course the link opens up in my other window. Okay, so we're gonna go to this one. Okay, how to import? Okay, so this one. Wait, is this the one I just copied from Adam or no? This is not the one I copied. Don't look at that one. Okay, obviously. I'm having major fail being able to copy and paste apparently. Okay, uh, okay, cool. Uh, oh, I've watched this one too. I must like uh, like videos on tech snips. Uh, okay, so here, here so here's where this those, so we've got this recommended snip field. This is where they show up on the play page. That's kind of cool, kind of cool. That's actually really cool um, because a lot of times we've got a lot of, uh, oh yeah, and like Adam's saying in the chat, uh, it's a work in progress. Um, what what did we launch in May? I think we what did yeah tech snips in May? That sounds right. I don't remember. That sounds right. Uh, so related videos. So I got a, I got a list of them here. Okay. So the course. Uh, so one of the things as uh, being a contributor is that uh, we're building courses to uh, to kind of package a group of them all together into one. And so this one specifically is a part of a course. And you can actually see that uh, under course here, managing and automating Active Directory with PowerShell. And so the last thing, did I make any? So the last thing is the associated files. 
Uh, so I so I was editing on the server. Uh, so last check, I'll copy this down into my local VS Code and see if I made any changes to it. I did. Okay, I must have changed something. No, I did not. Okay, cool. Uh, so the last thing is attaching the files you used with it. Uh, let's see. So if we, so I got in Git tech snips demos, Active Directory account lockout. Okay, cool. So so here's the this um. The script and and from before uh, I'll I'll run through this again real quick. Uh, let's see, tech snips. So this will get uploaded into the tech snips uh, GitHub repo. Uh, as you can see here, that these are all oh can't expand the name. All right, uh, these are all just the different scripts. Let's look at this first one here. How do how PowerShell's pipeline parameter binding works? So you can see that it's just called demo, and it's this is this is the demo that he ran through uh, for this snip. And also, uh, for me personally, I have mine in my own TechSips demos uh, repo. So here in Active Directory, uh, you can see Final Edition for Record. I pushed it, so it's there. Bam, nice. So if you don't use GitHub for your, for your scripts, I highly recommend it. Uh, so last thing before we hit submit is I've got a contributor ID. Um, I'm assuming that that's not something I should be sharing, so give me a minute while I paste that in and hits a bit. And the contributor ID is just a it's a long unique number that you will get as a um, as a contributor uh, when you when you audition. Uh, so everyone goes through an audition, but you should see my audition. I went through and watched it recently. It was terrible, uh, and I still got accepted. So. Uh, oh, oh, the SNP recording guidelines. So this is something else to mention. Um, so you notice I, uh, oh, I'm not logged in. I don't remember my password. Okay, well, we get a list of all the stuff you should be doing. This video isn't going over that. It's just how to submit one. So we literally hit submit. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and the last thing that will happen uh, is you'll be able to watch. I'm hoping you'll be able to see this in real time. So how to discover the source of Active Directory user account lockouts using PowerShell. This will actually move to peer review. It, I, I don't know how often it runs, actually. So um, uh, we will move to peer review, and then there it will be peer reviewed by whoever is currently in charge of peer review. And what's really funny is I'm actually recording this, and I'm the person that's in charge of peer review at the moment. So I'm going to peer review my own. Uh, but for the record, I do actually peer review my own. I, I watch, sit and watch the whole thing. And if I have any questions, I get someone else to check it out. Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, so cool. So you saw it move to peer review automatically. Um, and, and no, someone's not sitting and waiting for me to submit it so they can move it themselves. <laughs> and I also got an email about it too. My, my phone just vibrated. Oh, so then it goes into peer review. Um, for people who haven't done this before, it goes into peer review, uh, gets peer reviewed. Um, you can see there's actually two cards in held. So occasionally things come up where there's really bad audio or maybe um, maybe you missed a big part of it or or I had one where the screen part of the screen was cut off. I mean, there's all kinds of weird things that can happen. Uh, and then we've got, uh, we've got snips and uh, two edits. We've got editors again. They'll grab one, they'll edit it in editing and then it'll get posted a review by the man himself and then get published and when it gets published it all right so it pulls every five minutes that's good to know all right so when it gets published it will show up here on techsnips.io uh, as a recent publishly as a latest published snip ah uh, that was actually hour and a half that's not bad i feel like that's faster than when i do it uh, without people watching. So maybe I should live stream all of them. I don't know. What do you guys think? It was kind of fun, actually. I'm just talking to myself, but... All right. Anyway, anyone... I didn't actually pause... I didn't actually pause for questions anywhere. Does anyone watching have anything... have anything they want to ask me? I don't know. Is that something people do in live streams? <laughs> idea. 
All right. Well, anyway, I feel like it's just an end of an era here. All right, guys. Or is there a delay? There's a delay. So maybe I'll give it another minute. Um, anything else we can talk about tech stamps? I think not. I'm looking at the chat window right now. Okay, cool. I need a custom. You know, I'm actually working on that. The custom outro. I uh, So, I don't know if this is the time or the place, but biggest gotchas for new contributors. Uh, that, so, ah, this is a great one. Uh, so, when is your next snip? My next snip will probably be 3.30, probably tomorrow. Maybe, maybe later today. It depends. Uh, no, I've got a long list of honeydews at home. Uh, biggest gotchas for new contributors. Uh, I can't obviously can't speak to all contributors, uh, but I can speak to myself. Uh, the biggest problem I had. Uh, is getting used to, I would say. Not sounding, not sounding boring. Um, so. One of the things that here let me let me let me let me let me demonstrate this for you. Uh, so if I were to so if I were to actually sit and read something, it sounds really freaking boring. So if I were to say so if I were well, <laughs> I can't do it on command. But if I were to sit and like um, read a book out loud, except to my daughter because. She's like what one year old, and she absolutely loves all the intonations and movements, and she's got this. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, if I sound like I'm reading something that gets really boring, and I found that I would do that a lot. Let me see if I can demonstrate. Uh, next steps. Ooh, can I play a video on a live stream? I don't know if that'll work. We'll find out. Um, let's see, videos. Text steps. Oh, folder empty because I have it all in OneDrive. Oh, uh, text tips. Do I have my audition? What I don't. Oh no, I used to. I used to actually sort everything. Um, no, I see. Here's ones that got rejected, for instance. <laughs> that happens. Uh, re-record. Yeah, I had to re-record those. Final. Where's my audition? Oh, I'm shocked. Okay, well, so this is one of the biggest. I'm getting on a huge tangent here. One of the biggest, one of the biggest gotchas for me uh, was how boring I sounded when I was going through an instruction, going through an instruction, going recording a demo. And so I, I started pretending like I was talking to somebody, and man, that sounds weird. Let me. I'm in an empty room. I've got you know. I'm so I'm I'm in a shared office building. So I've got people. I've got I've got an LPC next door. I got an attorney on the other side of me, or attorney lawyer. I don't know. One of the two. Uh, and I've got a somebody else across the hall, and so if I sound like I'm just talking to somebody, it's really weird. <laughs> I feel weird, but you get over it. Um, having my headphones on to where I can actually hear myself in the mic, um, that has worked really well for me. Uh, because then I can actually hear get get constant feedback. But actors do it all well. So <laughs> actors are professionals at acting oh okay so here's a great point so along with that same gotcha Adam was saying that uh, we don't train we help people learn uh, and so entertaining engaging and informative so that's that's like the that's like if I was a marketing person um, that's how I would say it um, but uh, the thing that I like about tech snips um, we're getting away from gotchas we'll get back is we don't we don't have to sit here and sit through a huge module of classes, right? So we don't have we're not going to spend five hours talking about how to get into PowerShell. Well, <laughs> um, uh, if you want to, so when I learned PowerShell, I learned it by choosing a task to do and then learning how to do that in PowerShell, and then the next step, choosing another task, learning how to do that. And slowly you learn you learn how to write a module that can take power pipeline input. You learn how to write a module. You learn how to write a function. Uh, you learn how to write a function that can take pipeline input. You learn how to do how to write regex when regex uh, is faster than doing uh, a dot substring on a string or things like that. Um, 
And so, and so one of the biggest gotchas will we'll bring us back around is to sound entertaining is difficult. Uh, it it comes with practice. And so let me let me let me kind of demonstrate here. So I have every single video that I have ever recorded for tech, for tech snips. Period. So check this out. So I have uh, six or seventy submitted published snips, something like that. And so let me let me demonstrate. Out of those, set we'll call it seventy seventy snips. I have recorded this many times 634 <laughs> times <laughs> so uh, so a lot of them uh, at least at the beginning was you know I, I i record something i sit and listen to it and i'm like wow i sound really boring and so kind of paying attention to where i thought i was boring uh and then and then going back and doing it again um and a lot of these you can see are just a few seconds long. Like, you know, I got something that happens like, oh, I get a phone call. I got to take my mom calls, um, that kind of thing. Uh, but other gotchas, I think, is that you don't really need a fancy setup to record. Uh, so I just happened to have uh, here. I can I actually show you here. So I actually happen to have like a microphone and uh, a mixer already. Uh, because once upon a time I was going to record music and that just never worked out. So I just had this stuff. Um, but you, you don't need a fancy environment. Uh, let me, let me guys show you guys. So one of the things that I found with audio that worked really well is really simple as a blanket on the wall. I'm sure you've all heard that. Um, Adam always recommended recording in a closet. My, my closet isn't a closed closet. Um, uh, but a blanket, here I'm going to turn you around a blanket on the wall, even if it looks gross. So this is, this is my old moving blanket that the dogs used to sleep on. It's been washed. It doesn't have dog hair on it. Um, but it's just hanging on the wall, and that makes a that makes a huge difference for sound. Um, I wonder if it's no, it's not worth it to go down and pull it down right now. Um, time management. That's that's a, why why are you asking me what all the gotchas are if you've got all the got all the uh, recommendations here. Time management is another one too. Um, and so I actually I started using that's I started using um, so I've got an Office three sixty five subscription. Uh, and, it, and it comes with Microsoft To Do. I don't know if that's a personal or business level. I've got a business subscription because I do some consulting. Uh, and I use Microsoft To Do. I would bring it up because I got some got some personal tasks in there, people's names that I don't need to be streaming. Uh, and I would actually sit down uh, every Friday and decide what snips I want to do on what days, figure out how much I can do. And of course, it's going to vary for me personally from week to week because some weeks I got a lot of stuff for clients, some weeks I don't have hardly anything. Uh, and so on weeks I don't have hardly anything, I can do two snips a day. Uh, it's, that took an hour and a half. So why can't I just do what's eight divided by one and a half, right? Why can't I do that many snips in a day? Five. Why can't I do five snips in a day? I got other things to do, and and time management is another thing. I'm, I'm not all, I'm not not the greatest person at time management. Um, what are the gotchas? Uh, equipment. Uh, you have a computer. Um, Microphones are really inexpensive. We've got some ones that we recommend. Uh, I've got, for people that have never streamed before, this little bugger right here. This is a pop filter. This is what pop sounds like on, on this side of the pop filter. Pop, pop. This is what pop sounds like on this side of the pop filter. Pop, pop. I guess I'm not really, you can kind of hear that a little bit. Um, this made a huge difference for me. I used to have my microphone right here. And so I breathe through my nose and right onto the microphone. Oh my goodness, why am I why am I the one that's just up here coming up with ideas? Adam's just got brilliant here. Imposter syndrome. Oh, that was. I almost didn't, I almost didn't audition for tech snips because of imposter syndrome. That yeah, I mean, going into a little bit of background. So I, every IT person I ever know is really good at Googling for their problems, right? You find you find a lot of people that that post a lot of things and you so you come across someone like, I'm gonna pick on Adam here because he's on the stream, Adam uh, Bertram, where he's posted just a mountain of things and you, you get to, you start to think like, wow, that guy just knows everything. Search for, oh, I don't know how to do this. Oh, Adam's done a blog post on that and he's done a blog post on this and 
and and so he's like, well, well, he can he can do the snips so much better than I can. But 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 in in a community like Tech Snips, uh, like community, I don't know another one like Tech Snips. So I shouldn't say in in the Tech Snips community that that uh, that we're building, uh, we've, we've got a lot of support. Um, we've got people that we've got all. I'm trying to think of a good way to phrase this. Everyone brings their own. Uh, their own style to things, and that's what I really love about it is that n- nobody does snips like I do, and I don't do snips like anybody else does. And yet they all meet, and they're all accepted. Um, and I mean, my Google skills are sharp. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. So, yeah, th- that's why he's got so many blog posts. <laughs> um, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, we all do them differently. Uh, imposter syndrome. Um, where was I going with that? I obviously forgot. So, um, oh yeah. So, what I get back, back, get back to with imposter syndrome. Um, we've all been there. We've all done that. We've all sat behind a keyboard and had to create a new user in Active Directory. We've all sat behind a keyboard and had to. Uh, okay, let me phrase that. This is stuff that I that I have done. I've got a background with Active Directory. Um, not everyone does. Um, people like, um, I'm trying to think, like, uh, like Matt, like that Docker snip we saw. He's really good at Docker. Um, and so he can do snips on how to use Docker. And they might be really simple, uh, at least the ones that I've seen. Uh, I'm, I don't know a whole lot about Docker, so I haven't seen a lot of the more complex Docker snips, or I'm not sure that we have them yet. Um, but that's stuff that he's, he's good at and he can demonstrate. And the thing is, is not everybody is going to sit and take the time to record something. So you, you may not be the best person. This is how I see it anyway. I may not be the best person at these kind of things, but I am the person doing it. Let that sink in. Well, I think of something else to say. <laughs> um, what other thing? Um, uh, if you've ever done screen recordings, that was one thing I'd never done before. Um, but I use um, OBS. It's here. I'm just gonna take five seconds here. Uh, it's really easy to use. Never used it. This is what it looks like. Got desktop audio. Got mic audio. Uh, we've got people that will help you figure it out if you don't know how to use it. Um, so I guess I guess the parting. The parting thing that I really want to say is that if you're not sure if you want to contribute with tech snips, even after watching how simple it is to make a video, I would heavily encourage you uh, to submit an audition. That's the easiest thing to do. Gosh, man, maybe we should post. I feel like I should post my audition somewhere now. If I, I'm going to find it and I'm going to post it, and just to give people an idea of, of of before and after. Ooh, I said that on video, so now it has to happen. Anyway, I'll find it. Um, but yeah, my edition was pretty terrible. Um, where was I going with that? Where was I going? With the parting thing. Uh, submit an audition. Uh, get part of our be, become part of our community if you're interested. Um, I know I've talked to a couple of folks that may or may not be listening that would be interested in doing this. Um, we've got a great community of people that are very supportive, very helpful. Um, put together a good team, and you should be a part of it. Oh what? Did did you see something that I didn't? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm blind. Okay, so my audition. Um, you submitted a bad audition where because it was accepted because you had potential. There we go. From the person that actually reviews the audition, you submitted a bad audition, but you had potential. Um. So I guess that's another thing you should mention is uh, if you submit a SNP that isn't isn't accepted, there's none of this. Uh, we don't put a big rejected stamp on it and pass that idea to someone else. We let you we, we give you feedback, uh, let you go back and re-record it. And I, I can say this because I've done this um, and resubmit. So and now I'm a rock star. Uh, um, here I don't know if this actually works in in a stream. Maybe, 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 Adam. I'll just give you the, my audition, or if you've got it. Yeah, I don't think the audio is going through because I have my desktop audio muted. 
Anyway, maybe yeah, no, here, I'll, I'll I'll post it somewhere and and we'll yeah, yeah we'll I'll I'll yeah. I'm like having second thoughts about I'm listening to it though because it's pretty terrible. Here, let me let me go ahead and get this. All right, let's look at uh, typecasting in. So you should be able to hear it now. So uh, typecasting is, is the method quiet. of taking uh, input typically from an. It's really quiet because I was terrible at audio recordings back then. You can see everything's zoomed way out. And, uh, forcibly casting it to be. I sound really freaking boring. Uh, so you can uh, use it in an expected way. Uh, so here, I'm, I'm actually gonna few turn up VLC so you can hear it. Uh, so here I'm assigning. I've got the, uh, the variable Listen A. Listen to this terrible monotone. Uh, this is a string. Uh, so spoiler alert: if we look at the type name, it's a string. So we can Ooh. do string things to it. Like I wouldn't have space, accepted this uh, with a hyphen, and it works. Cool. Uh, then if we look at uh, variable B here. I'm assigning it the uh, datetime construct for in, in string format so this, this, uh, for the this, day that uh, we live in infinity. Demo I was talking about. Um, and if we assign that typecasting, we can look at type name. About typecasting. And we can see that it's it's a string. Yeah. So powerful. Oh, you didn't accept it. You're right. Didn't, yes, didn't know to me. convert that to date time. No, that's that's really um, good point. So we can we're still do people. string things to it, so we can replace the zeros with uh, two. Uh, but potential. we can't do date time things to it, so we can't use the add days method because uh, that doesn't exist on a string. No, this is really um, boring. Anyway, so but uh, so, since we found ourselves in this quandary. Uh, uh, So I'm going to turn that desktop audio back down. And any other questions? Because voice, like, I don't think angels sound like this. An IT, IT career development platform, I think that's a great, that's a great closer. Uh, that's what TechSnips is. It really makes you feel, feel like you know things. Um, if you get assigned a topic and it gets accepted, People like your video. So think about it. Anyway, I don't know how to sign off live streams. I just, I don't know how to do that. So you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful, whatever time of day it is. It's afternoon for me. So you guys all have a wonderful afternoon. And hopefully you check out some of our snips on TechSnips. Just leave us <laughs> crying. Okay, bye. <laughs>